Welcome. If the weather permits, tonight I will be trying to image the belt of Orion, which is an asterism of just three bright stars, and there are some interesting nebulae close by, which I will also try to get in the image at the same time. Now, the framing is a little bit tricky, so uh, let me just show you how I do that with the planetarium software Stellarium. Over to the planning department. So here we are in Stellarium. And we have Orion over here and the belt of Orion, which is what I'm going to image right here. So let's just bring that to the center of the frame and zoom in somewhat. So there it is. Here is the belt with the three stars, Alnitak, Alnilam and Mintaka. And for tonight's image, I also want to have the Horsehead Nebula, which is down here, in the frame. So, first of all, I need to plan the framing of the camera. And for that, I'm going to the setup up here and the make sure that I have the telescope. We have the 9480pH here with a 414 millimeter focal length and the camera is the ASI 2600MC Pro and here I have the resolution in pixels and the chip size. Uh, these data combined will make Stellarium able to predict what the view on the sky will be when I point it to the sky. So I will switch on my sensor view here and now we have the sensor is the 2600 and the correct telescope is set. I have different telescopes here I can choose. But this is a 9480pH and this is the frame I will get. And as you can see, I have a very nice framing of the belt stars themselves. But the Horsehead Nebula down here is outside the frame, so let's see if I can fix that by rotating the camera slightly. Uh, minus 5, minus 10 degrees, that's 10 degrees counterclockwise. It's beginning to look promising. Maybe 15 degrees. Yes, I think that's it. As you can see, I now have something that looks promising. I have the I have a good diagonal feel of the stars here. And I have the Horset Nebula, most of IC434. I have the Flame Nebula. I can even fit in Sigma Orionis, which is this double star down here. So that's what I want to set up on the telescope. Now, having established that I need to set a camera angle of 15 degrees counterclockwise, the next problem, of course, is how to do that. I don't have an electronic camera rotator, so I need to find another way. And uh, luckily, there's a neat little trick you can use if you have a smartphone and a bubble level app. I'm using this free bubble level app which I have downloaded and it's very useful because it has an exact readout of the tilt in degrees. I find it useful to have a soft vinyl cover which gives me a little bit of friction against the back of the camera and then I press the phone against the back of the camera and I level it up so that the readout is zero degrees and then I hold it firmly against the back and rotate until I have the exact angle I want 15 degrees easy as pie now as this image is really about stars I want the stars to really pop out in the image so I want some diffraction spikes around them. But this is a refractor and it does not naturally produce those. So I want to share a further little trick with you.
In order to get the diffraction spikes, I soldered together this little mask out of some iron thread. This is just like the spiral veins in a, in a mirror telescope and uh, the light will bend around it and create the spikes I want. Now, all I can hope for is a little break in the clouds and if that doesn't come tonight, I will work with a couple of hours of data which I produced on a previous night. Under all circumstances, I will show you what I've got at the end of the video. Well, the clouds did not part, so I did not get any more data for this image tonight. So I'll have to continue the project at some other time. The image is quite noisy as it is, because it's only 62 minutes of data, but I want to share my methods with you anyway. Until next time, clear skies.